Uh, so Adventure Time podcast. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Adventure Guys, the podcast for humans and dogs. I'm Eric the Human. And I'm Nick the Human. And welcome to part two of our Jeff Rosenstock special. If you were listening to our last episode, that was part one. That was us walking through the streets of Brooklyn to get to the Warsaw to see Jeff's Ska Dream concert. Yeah, we documented the whole experience, talked to a bunch of fans of Jeff's, fans of the podcast, friends, old and new alike, even musicians that uh, played that evening. It was it was a lot of fun. We thought, what better way to cap off this weekend than to get an interview with Jeff Rosenstock? And we were so fortunate that not only did he say yes, but three other members of the Death of Rosenstock band, that's right, John, Kevin, and Mike all jumped in on this interview, and it was so much fun to do. Yeah, so we briefly continue our discussion of the Adventure Time episode Incendium, which we did a little bit of an analysis on our part one episode. Uh, so we're just going to wrap that up at the beginning of this, and then we'll get into the interview with Jeff and the band pretty quickly thereafter. So we're going to jump right in, and you're going to hear us walking down on the streets with our iPhones out recording the rest of the episode. Yeah, hope you enjoy. Thanks for uh, checking out the Adventure Guys podcast. Here we go. All right, so day two, we are heading over to the Warsaw a little bit early so we can get to our interview with Jeff, John, and Kevin. Ooh, yeah, we've had a great day so far. Eric stayed over, slumber party, <laughs> high fives, <laughs> beers till late at night, and got coffee this morning, some bagels. Just bagels. Classic, New York bagels, baby. Classic Brooklyn stuff here, folks, and... We uh, we spent the day doing some fun bro stuff, working on some pod things. We we whipped up a new song, which will probably be in this episode. <laughs> um, we prepared for the interview, got the technology double checked and locked and loaded, and then we got a visit from a fan. Yeah, super nice to see Cat Burnside. Uh, we saw her at the show last night, and she stopped by to give us these amazing gifts today. Oh yeah. my gosh. Head on over to our Instagram to see them in all their glory. But we got these two stitch versions of, of BMO on a skateboard with custom lettering specific to us. Mine was Worry in the, as from the Jeff Rosenstock album, in the Worry font, beautiful. And then Eric's was even, <laughs> even next level. You wanna? <laughs> Yeah, A cab baby. A with a heart. Yeah, Demo. Uh, I I know where his heart is. Yeah, <laughs> and and Cat was very thoughtful and has been listening and knows the inner conflict that Eric's been having during Bemo November, when Bemo seems to really, you know, love authority figures, especially be a sheriff, police officer, and it it's like I don't that's that doesn't seem to go with Bemo's ethos. So I. <laughs> So Kat was like, look, if when, you, when that moment comes and you're confused, you can look here. And There's the clarification. And, and, and have trust in BMO. BMO does not back the blue. A Thai place was good. We're looking for dinner right now on, on, <laughs> on the way. There's French, there's Thai, there's Mexican. I don't know. I'm going to think about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, okay. Uh, it's going to be great to interview Jeff, John, and Kevin. I am a little bit nervous, but in the good way. I'm a little sharper yeah. right now. Yeah, sure. Like, this is our first step up as podcasters into the arena, and uh, I'm excited to, to take this leap. We're ready. We've been preparing for this moment. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely not an interview podcast. Yeah. It's totally outside of our comfort zone. Uh, so I think we're going to try and keep it a little more casual maybe stick to our general format as being a podcast about adventure time and not try to focus on asking weird music questions. Yes, which we could do. <laughs> should should we want to? Or should they just start volunteering that information? We could we can follow that rabbit hole, but uh well we're, we want to make it a little bit of a different interview for these guys and something that you're only going to get 
on the Adventure Guys podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, let's see. Last night we left off talking about Adventure Time with our episode discussion. I think we kind of wrapped it up. I think we were kind of done yeah. talking about the the analysis part. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're watching episode... Uh, season three, episode twenty-six, Incendium. Yeah, and we're we're gonna continue our analysis through the this part two app. Um, it was good. We talked to a few people about this at the show last night, but Eric, did you see the snail? Oh, we're gonna play. Did you see the snail? Yeah, yeah play it. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yes, I saw the snail. Nick, did you see the snail? No. I didn't see the snail. Well, we heard from some of our contributors last night. Apparently, food saw the snail. Uh, I can't remember where it was, though. Cat saw the snail. She sees the snail every day. Yeah. <laughs> I, I seem to miss it all the time. So, Eric, let's get your congratulations. Theme song. Well, we still got to ask Jeff, John, and Kevin if they see the, saw uh, okay. the snail. And then, yeah. So... Stay tuned for the conclusion of the Did You See the Snail segment. Want to move on to Miscellaneous Mania? Yeah, let's do things you may not know. Eric and Nick will show you all the trivia in We're uh, we're eating a little bit of dinner right now. We just had a burrito and way too many chips at Calexico in Greenpoint. Once again, revealing everywhere that I go in my day to day life. Uh, <laughs> what do we have here today to talk about on this episode? All right, um, start things off. We we mentioned this last time, but Adam Mudo and Rebecca Sugar. Uh, wrote and storyboarded this episode. Did any deal? We haven't done the Rebecca Sugar episode in a while, have we, Eric? No, I don't think so. This was a weird one for her. Maybe it's a weird one for anyone. Yeah. Um, so it is the first appearance of Flame Princess and Flame King. It was voiced by Keith David. Yeah. This was the Valentine's Day episode. Very weird. <laughs> but this, yeah. So interesting. Okay, here's some really good one. In 2013, uh, Jeremy Shada, whose voice is Finn, said that it was his personal favorite episode up until that point. It's weird. <laughs> interesting choice. Up until that point. Yeah. Okay. And Rebecca Sugar did say that this was finally the episode where she can make Finn cry. Um, although, he, you know, he cried previously. Um, but it seems to be something she wanted to do, according to the wiki. It was a great moment when Finn was crying. And he was angry at himself for crying, so he, he was punching his tear ducts. Yeah. Just him punching himself emo, in the face. And a beam of flashback. All right, cool. I think that's, uh, that's a good spot to end Miscellaneous Mania. Should we figure out what episode we're going to watch next week? I guess we can do that later on. Yeah, let's go, to the, let's go get ready to interview Jeff. Yeah, okay. Should I be getting shocked while I'm doing this? <laughs> like the whole time? I hope, I, it's, there's some good grounding here, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for taking the time to do our cartoon podcast. Yeah, yeah. So it is an adventure time podcast where yes. we talk about our favorite and perhaps best cartoon ever. Yes. But like any good podcast, we have lots of digressions into okay. pop culture movies and such. And your band is one of our favorites and we talk about it a bunch. Yeah. Oh, and, cool. and it's funny is that we had a bunch of friends here and, even a couple fans last night that we met. Okay. And we think there's some sort of energy crossover sure. between what y'all do and uh, and what Adventure Time's about. And to give some backup to that claim that I just made. Okay, cool. Yeah. A friend give of ours. A fact. A fan of ours okay. surprised us with this incredible crossover, unsolicited. 
She uh, made oh, these for yeah. us. Oh, oh, I want this one of the BMO ACAB one. Oh. That's cool. Can your listeners see this? We posted it and we're going oh, to. Yeah. Oh, all right. Oh, got it. Yeah, Mic yeah, up yeah. too? Great, very good. That rocks. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, we made her for the first time last night at the Scott <laughs> Show. But she's been a listener for a long time. That's cool. So shout out to Kat. Oh, yeah. Shout out to get, yeah. So, but while we're talking about Adventure Time, yeah. best first question: When was the first time you interacted with Adventure Time, and what was your impression of it? Uh, I first saw Adventure Time. I saw the short because um, a friend was like, "Yo, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen," um, and it was great, and I loved it, and I could not believe that it got made into a like show. Right. When it was on TV, I was like, "How the fuck did they?" How did that happen? How did they let that thing on TV? Yeah. Um, and then it was just like, it, it was even funnier than the short and like just got funnier and funnier and funnier and funnier. I feel like uh, in Bond, the music industry, that was something that was on in the morning uh, when we were packing up in hotels a lot. And I remember having Adventure Time on. That's when I watched a bunch of it. Uh, I don't know. That's me. What about you two? Yeah. I've actually never seen it before, but I know my nieces and nephews were super into it growing up. And I wanted to get to it, but I didn't. There's so. time. Always is. Huh? Yeah, there's always time. And I'm still I'm still down. Yeah. Yeah. Then why haven't you seen it? Oh. You said you're down. That's a loaded question. Mm. <laughs> is Adventure Time the one with Finn? Yeah. yeah. Finn. Oh, I've seen that. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I remember the first one I saw, and it may be the only one I've ever seen, was the one where they have like the the they have like the the music cup battle with with death. Yes. And, yeah. And and, uh, and death just plays the double kick drum. Oh, I've seen and, that. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and yeah. just boo. <laughs> that's so. That's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Yeah. Like that one like moment is so funny. Yeah. It's a good moment. It's a pretty indicative of the show where they take these yeah. like loaded, heavy existential topics and undercut it with some good yeah. comedy. Yeah. But until this moment, you didn't realize that, that was Adventure Time. I think, yeah, because he said, he told me about this and I was like, I've never seen that. But I know people talk about it all the time. And you were still very down to do it. They both really wanted to do it without having seen it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, my, 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 my roommates, my old roommates love the show and, and one of them would always watch. And I, see, I feel like I've walked past it a lot. Yeah. And okay. uh, while they're watching or just in general, just walk past them in general. Just like, oh, hi, I'm going to get a snack. Yeah, I, I can always picture it whenever someone mentions it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I definitely I don't know the character names. I don't know how he just pulled that out. There's Finn. He's the boy. And then there's a yellow thing like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a princess, right? Princess yeah. something. Mm -hmm. Princess mm -hmm. lady. Mm -hmm. Call her. There there's a lady and a princess. Oh, geez. Oh, no. And then there's an old man, right? Like mm -hmm. a grumpy man, like ice man. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Like, mm -hmm. a, like He's old, royal. Royal ice. <laughs> yep. And then, yeah, that's, that's it. There you go. That's your cast. Couldn't have said it better myself. So. <laughs> and no one else. Nothing else. Nothing else. Well, just to get on the same page in the back cartoons, though, besides Adventure Time, for both of you, John and Kevin, any, what are your favorite cartoons? Like all ages cartoons in this sphere. I mean, I grew up on like Animaniacs and Tiny Toons, but I also love like Cowboy Bebop and okay, sure. Like you know, I, I start it starts sliding into like the anime side of it's things. It's easy too. to do that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, everything on Adult Swim is always generally pretty, pretty good. Yeah, we watch a lot of Bluey in our house. You know that one? Bluey is a is it a cartoon from Australia? Right, honey. Yes, from Australia, <laughs> um, and it's about a family of dogs, and it's extremely wholesome, and it's uh, it's great. It's a great watch when you just want to feel good. And let me tell you, life is bad. <laughs> so when you watch Bluey, you feel less bad. Yeah. So that's a good one. We watch a lot of Craig of the Creek, too. Oh, yeah, that's man. right. Yeah, that's right. You're All a right. Craig of the Creek. Give me my household. bucks. My job's done. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> Uh, so I guess this is going to be directed at Jeff, but working sure. on Craig of the Creek. Yes. Do you feel the legacy of Adventure Time? Like, does the cast and crew, like the people that you're working with, does that show permeate like the Cartoon Network scenario? Yeah, absolutely. Like, especially the show that we're on. Like, when when I got like the email or the call or whatever to work on it, and I saw that Kelly Cruz, who produces Adventure Time, was producing 
Craig of the Creek, I was just like, oh shit, this is going to be like a good show. Whoa, yeah. this yeah. is going to be cool. And then, um, uh, what, and then I started finding out that like some of the artists and, uh, people from Adventure Time, like Nikki Yang, who I believe voices BMO, right? right yeah. Like yeah. she was writing on, on Craig for a while. Um, like I realized a crossover. I was just like, oh wow, this is, I can't, like, I just kind of couldn't believe it. Um, like I had a, I had a friend who like when I saw that Adventure Time, uh, short, um, told me I, I was like oh yeah i hope i could like make music for a cartoon someday like like adventure time like that'd be cool and my friend was like i don't think you'd be able to do that <laughs> uh yeah. and uh there's somebody uh who uh i worked on the show with who had a very similar experience regarding adventure time we're all like yeah what's up sucker we're doing it <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. but uh it's but it's but like uh i don't know i think adventure time like as far as like the tone or whatever, like I don't know how familiar you are with Craig of the Creek, but like batshit insane stuff happens all the time. It's like nonstop ridiculousness yeah. Yeah. on that show. And I think that, that that kind of version of it feels like it started from Adventure Time where it's like all the lines are super funny. It's like funny yeah. if you're an adult, but it's not for adults. It's not like in like a wink and a nod kind of way. It's just like, this is just funny and out of control chaos. Uh, right. Like you can trace you know, that lineage back through like Steven Universe and yeah. Adventure Time. And it's all part of like the family tree. And I am a huge Craig of the Creek fan. Cool. Of course. Like great stuff. It's good. Great they stuff. make a good show. Yeah. They, know the how, they know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's cool. Like I, like I can't think of really anything aside from Adventure Time. Like before Adventure Time that had that same kind of energy where it was like it hits a really interesting spot for me where like you can think of like like foster's home for example is like non-stop mayhem but like it's a kid's show like adventure adventure time is and then you have like something like say bob's burgers or the simpsons which are crazy but it's not really for like kids kids right uh but adventure time seemed to be a thing that like anybody could watch it and take something from it and especially like how heavy they get with the topics too it's like yeah, pretty wild. I'm, it, I'm not far in enough to know like how heavy they get like towards the end, but yeah. I guess there was a bit of an inflection point at like that 2008 time when Adventure Time hit the scene, sort of changed the tone a little bit. Yeah, I think isn't that cool? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like regular show was a little bit contemporary of that. Yeah, that, I think that, too. that's yeah. true. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, regular show was pretty wild. Yeah. yeah. Is Adventure Time like the same uh, length of time as like Craig too? Like a like a twenty minute, fifteen minute episode too? Eleven minute episode. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, I think it's insane that they can cram that much to do like a full plot within such a small condensed Dude, amount of time. I watch yeah. a twenty two minute cartoon now, and I'm like, it's too it's long. too long. It's too long. Oh, wow. Chop this thing up. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not to sell you on Adventure Time, but you should make it because everything that happens in it is canonical. Okay. So like. As you get eight seasons in, everything that happened in season two, like still it builds on itself, Ooh, which yeah. is which is the good cool part about it too, which cartoons didn't always used to do either. No, yeah. yeah. Yeah, more episodic. And going back to Craig of the Creek, and when you were approaching it and looking about doing the music for it, yeah. were there cartoons that were inspiring you like, I want to do something like that, or I don't want to do anything like that, or um, kind of, I, I, I mean the first, uh, and I'm not just saying this cause I'm on the podcast, but yeah. the first thing that I thought was like, Oh, adventure time is sick music. I want to do like a chip toony kind of thing. And I think Ben was just like, uh, nah, you do look, do this, this show should sound like its own show, you know? Yeah. Um, I mostly not really cartoons. It was mostly just like watching movies and stuff like that. Like it was very early on. We were just trying to like implant the idea that the ridiculous situations that the kids are going through are real. It's mm-hmm. not imaginary. It's actually happening right. because it is in like, you know, the kid's head is actually happening. So instead of like referencing, say like cartoon stuff to get inspired, I mean, uh, well also like Ghibli stuff a lot of the time, like, but like uh, more just kind of like, like princess Mononoke uh-huh. was like a big one when I was trying to figure out just how to do like good action music and stuff like that or just like any movies that they would reference. It, it was more stuff like that than trying to reference cartoons and like referencing like rancid demos. Like there was a, <laughs> a demo of the record Life Won't Wait. And like those were like one, like it was like Studio Ghibli stuff and this rancid demo <laughs> tape from 1997 were like the, the impetus for a lot of things. 
That's rad. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, a lot of the music is cool, and, and the show does a great part of treating the emotions and the things that are happening to them with respect. Yeah. So when it feels big or dramatic, that's how it feels when you're a kid. That's been one of my favorite parts of the show, and the music helps. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, I, I've, I, yeah, that's, I feel like that, that's nice to hear. That's my job, I think, is like to... <laughs> to make sure that their emotions feel real, that to make sure that you're feeling it. Like I'm not, I'm not trying to make music that treats anything that they're doing as silly. Like, mm-hmm. even if it is silly, like, I feel like my job is to like try and make it really feel like either like, you know, either feel real or feel like, like when I was a kid and just like listening to headphones while shit was going on and like what I would be listening to, whether it'd be like anthrax or like operation Ivy or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's an underpinning of a lot of these cartoons, especially from this current era. That there's a level of sincerity to yeah. to the action that wasn't necessarily always there in like '90s era cartoons. Yeah, I feel well '90s era cartoons, like the stuff we grew up on, were, were so slapsticky, um, right. and they were just like super super funny. It was just like super funny slapstick stuff a lot of the time, like Animaniacs or Tiny Toons or like Tasmania or like any of that kind of stuff. You know? Yeah, uh, it's cool though. I don't know. It's cool. Like I, it's cool that kids have a cartoon now that many cartoons now that like, I don't know, could teach them how to deal with their emotions. I feel like maybe our generation didn't have anybody teaching us to deal with our emotions. They're just like, <laughs> no. Hey man, it's a nineties. Life is great. Check out green day. Here's a cartoon. Let's go. <laughs> The president plays his good. saxophone. Now he plays his saxophone at the beginning of the cartoon. Isn't that fun? I, no I problems here. I can't believe we didn't mention earlier, John, that we watched Fully Cooly too, and that like oh, yeah. musically oh, yeah. in that cartoon too, like it knocked my socks off. When yeah, I saw it. yeah. You guys same think? here. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 was like yeah, cool. Um, there's also this anime uh, called Cooking Master Boy. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, I think it's called Chuku Ichiban. Uh, but I, I got that as a reference for an episode, uh, that was about food on Craig of the Creek. And just like, I watched, we watched that whole thing. It's so good. And like all the music is just like so ridiculous and so like over the top and it's really, really great. Yeah, that's, I, that's I feel like neon, like Evangelion is also kind of like that where it's right. just like, there's only like six or seven music cues, but they're both like, so just like, Oh, let's go. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So it's funny you bring up being influenced by movies for working on the music for the Creek. Cause there's a lot of cinematic influences in adventure time. Yeah. And one that's come up a lot in the recent episodes we've been covering is David Lynch. And to the point where there's actual recreations of certain scenes in, from his movies in the show as like homage. Wow. So, which is really rad. Uh, but on the topic of David Lynch, any fans here? Are you guys David Lynch fans? You got one who's sitting over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Off mic. It's Mike. <laughs> Mike, you're the you're the head. Was that you're the David Lynch head? That, that would be true. Should I get in? On yeah, that? yeah. Mike is the Lynch head. It's been a frequent topic on our podcast. So. I've been informed I'm the Lynch head. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Thank you for joining us. Sure. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. So, uh, in the Lynch canon, what stands apart from the rest for you? I think the best thing he's ever done is Twin Peaks season three. Oh, damn. Mm. We are on the same page about that one. It's, uh, it's fantastic. I would change nothing from it. It's, it's one of the greatest things I've ever seen. I, I love t- it. What was that anime that we watched that was David Lynch-esque that we watched at Jeff's apartment? Perfect on? Blue. Perfect Blue. Perfect, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, he, he exposed me to that, and it, like, man, afterwards. After when we were finished watching, I was like, I didn't know what to think. You know what I mean? Like, and it was incredible, you know? Like an animated, an animated thing did that to me. Yeah. yeah. If you're on a podcast, you got to talk into a mic or else don't get here. I forgot. I forgot. He doesn't have one back on the drum set. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't know how the mic- microphones work. <laughs> well, he has like fucking 15. What are you talking about? Just ambient though. They're just kind of all around. He just knows that if he talks, 10 microphones are going to pick it up all around. <laughs> They're always listening. Whoa. Yeah. Uh, well, that's a perfect though. Like point to bring up perfect blue. I'm gonna have to go watch that. We'll have to do a, a spin off app on that or something. Yeah, it's we, a it's a really good. Uh, it's it's intense and it would come with a uh, uh, trigger warning for sure. Um, but um, it is a really good movie as well. It's really like uh, um, there's only one I would say, and it reminds me of Lynch's work a lot in the way uh, it's kind of like slips from reality to um, something more subconscious, kind of uh, at will. Pretty much. Um, yeah. Great, great movie. Yeah. That's good. 
Jeff, it's you, the guy who did, Sorry, never mind. <laughs> and if you're looking at me, no, I just I'm just pretty unfamiliar. Yeah, that's all. I saw like. I'm wrong. I understand I'm wrong here. But I saw, what was it, Blue Velvet? I saw Blue Velvet in college like everybody else. I was like, this is fucking dumb. Uh, and that was pretty much it. And then a bunch of everybody but me watched Eraserhead. Oh, no, I certainly did At my house in Athens, and everyone just yelled about how bad it sucked. So it was always kind of hard to get in. Really? Uh, wow. And then, I don't know. I watched There's a lot of time in this life. I'll get to it. Yeah. yeah. No rush. I watched the first 20 minutes of Eraserhead and there was no dialogue. And I was like, I can't, man. I can't. I'm out. What would you do about There Will Be Blood? There Will Be Blood? Yeah. That's him? No, no, there was no dialogue at the beginning for like the first 30 minutes of that. I don't know. I just, there wasn't. That's I, a lie. It's not 30 I, minutes, I think, right? I, I, think I needed to be in the, in, in the right space for that movie. You and think I you'd not. appreciate it now? I don't know. There's so many other things I could do besides watch <laughs> that. I, just, just, I, don't, I don't think that movie's for me. Like I've watched some of Twin Peaks. I'm like, this is fine. This is fine. Mm-hmm. And the, you know, the, the, you know, I don't like pineapple on my pizza. Some people do. Yeah. yeah. Life is different for everyone. You know, wow. That one just might not be for me. Things that are challenging in art are fun, but it shouldn't be like work. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I like I like a think. You got to find your challenge. It's just that one yeah. just isn't for me, and that's okay. You know, with like the Lynchism stuff, like Mike introduced me to it, but then it's like. I wasn't always fully into that stuff, but like now as I see stuff like that, like in Atlanta, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. um, now I like really enjoy it, you know, like this, the spookiness and like yeah. just like the undertones. You're I just guess like, that's weird because I love Atlanta and I know that that is like a lot of nods to Lynch in there. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. His influence pops up in weird places. Uh, and we we kept noticing it in Adventure Time, and we're only recently surprised to find that Pendleton Ward is specifically influenced by David Lynch and put it in the show intentionally quite a bit isn't that fucking cool <laughs> yeah and to, <laughs> like it's it seems like he just kind of has carte blanche to do what he wants uh which is sick and that's kind of that feels like the vibe on craig too i don't know if that's just because of the lineage or i don't know if that's because that's how like kelly works but where it's just like let the creative people do whatever crazy shit they're trying to do and let's go and let's yeah. just try and do a good job at it so it's good you know yeah that's the spirit you need to make cool shit yeah yeah Cool. Well, we can wrap things up. Any uh, last bits, Eric? Uh, sure. So we do review a specific episode of Adventure Time okay. every podcast step, and uh, we kind of rip off Back to the Islands a little bit because we go completely out of order. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> which is a great format decision, by the way. We've gotten to t- for our show, we've gotten to talk about so many cool moments and episodes that we would never have gotten to if we had to wait like oh that's cool three years to get there it's kind of the opposite with lost, <laughs> it's lost. it was just like every episode <laughs> by episode 80 you're like what happened already what is going on yeah <laughs> yeah it i mean having a serialized drama go out of order is could be a little bit rough we got lucky by picking yeah. a show like adventure time i didn't think we intended it to be as fruitful as it has wound up being yeah because you, you, you can take it one at a time and just appreciate it for and yeah you forget some plot elements here and there but ultimately every episode stands on its own pretty well were you fans beforehand i yeah. was but not as big a fan as i am now sure that's cool yeah. that's awesome that's a sign of a good show <laughs> i guess lost is a bad show because i am not <laughs> a fan of lost anymore <laughs> i killed it <sighs> you, you are you're watching that show in such an unbelievable way <laughs> Like that is a show where you have to watch it. I'm a pioneer. Um, like each episode in a row, and maybe take notes because they're not helping you uh, understand it. And it, in in yeah, in, 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 in nothing, its most perfect because none of it makes because plenty of things just don't make sense. Oh sure, sure. That's the, and that's and you're and went. you're making it worse. You're <laughs> yeah. like yeah yeah exactly. What's the opposite of improving? That's what I like to do <laughs> to my life. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. So uh, we had our own analysis discussion earlier about season three, episode 26, Incendium. Okay. Uh, and regardless of... Which one is that? It is the season, season three finale where Finn meets Flame Princess for the first time. Okay. And regardless of whether you have... I saw it a long time ago. Right. Uh, analysis aside, we just have to ask everyone, did you see the snail? I don't think so. 
Yeah. It's okay. I did I see it. the snail? It's, I mean, yeah. It's, what happens? Uh, it's just, he's he's there, but <laughs> whether you episode, saw him or not. It, every episode, the snail is in. And it's oh. like a Where's Waldo sort of situation. Damn. Uh, I've n- uh, no, but I- I'd watch it again. So the snails in Thank You too. Yes. All of them. Every single one. Every single one. Wow. They put them in there. That's cool. Yeah. A little scavenger hunt for the yeah. fans. It's okay if you didn't see them, but we just, we have it to It doesn't, ask. your eyes say it's not okay that I didn't <laughs> see them. I just, <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't see we the You're take a the poser. Podcast. They didn't even Bro. see the episode. You're I have it. terrible eyesight. I wouldn't have seen yeah. anything. <laughs> it's and I'm rarely wearing my glasses. Now. <laughs> because of that I have angry shot, eyes. Us, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, a, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, you guys have never seen Adventure Time before. There's a snail in every episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. Well, that's all we uh, wanted to discuss with you today. Cool. Thanks for your time. Thanks for talking. Thank to you. Us. Stoked for the show tonight. Last Me night too. ripped. Hell so. yeah. yeah. Cool. Hell Thanks yeah. for having us. Thanks I'm sorry for I've never us. seen it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Great to meet you. Cool. All right, so no dream. Jeff Rosenstock, night two, in the books. In the books, Eric. I'm sad. It's our Jeff Rosenstock weekend is coming to a close. Been looking forward to it two months, but God, was it epic! Yeah, man, I needed this weekend for sure. It's powering you. The Holophonics are going on tour. They're probably on tour right now when this episode drops. It's gonna <laughs> just power you. I hope. Yeah, what a waste of a plug. The Holophonics will have played our first shows in two years. Like. A few days after the uh, before this episode yeah. is. Oh, well, it's all good. Go <laughs> check out the records on Spotify or buy them or whatever in Bandcamp. Uh, and it was awesome. The, obviously, you just heard the interview. So much fun. Those guys ruled. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what else to add, really, Eric. We are walking back through Greenpoint right now. Walking back to the next place. This has been a very chaotic couple of episodes. So thank you for sticking with us, our longtime listeners. And... I'm very sorry for everyone new that's coming to us. Yeah, we gave a preface on the last one that usually we're in a very controlled environment with professional recording gear, not just holding our phones up to our faces while the wind gusts at 30 miles per hour and makes it all distorted. Yeah, we, we do more or less have a format. We, we do, you know, follow conventions to a certain point. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> yeah, we usually talk about an episode of Adventure Time during it uh so if you do want to stick with us and try it out uh on a quote-unquote normal episode uh we are going to watch uh a new episode of adventure time for next week and have a regular episode come out just on all your regular podcast apps do you want to pick what episode we're going to watch yeah let's do it all right run that episode generator what are we going to watch next week what are we going to Sixty-five. Did you say sixty-five? Or yeah, sixty-five. Oh, from bad to worse. Season three, episode thirteen, from bad to worse. It's got Lumpy Space Princess in the picture. I am not excited about that, but. Uh, All right. Well, we might have a guest holophonic on for next week's episode. Oh, uh, yeah. I can't wait. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. If you liked the app, make sure to subscribe, follow us, uh, rate us on iTunes, all that good stuff. Yep. Good app. Good, good app, app, Peace out, y'all. Bye.